I have come across a newly pregnant vegan woman who is so out of touch with nature and reality that she is denying her body's cravings for meat as well as ignoring her body's rejection of the fruits and vegetables that she thinks is so good for her. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Fruitarianne. Hello friends and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am so excited to share with you this video about my first trimester and as a pregnant vegan, actually raw vegan woman and um, yeah. Um, All these vegan girls like it raw man. Had a lot of, I, I, uh, I guess that's why she's pregnant. My body has changed so much. It's insane and uh, and I'm now just yesterday moving I'm now in my second trimester so now and it's it's exciting but also uh, now I can share how my first trimester went and um, I'm gonna start with like from week five when I started feeling some symptoms and just what I've been experiencing you know um, as a vegan as a raw vegan and uh, it's kind of surprising everything that I experienced because um, I don't know I was like, imagining you know I haven't really been told that much how hard it can be to be pregnant I and I didn't believe surprising that lack of video cuts but she is all over the place that, oh well I am really healthy uh, I eat and she hasn't really said world. anything I live the left best lifestyle in the world and I am you know I haven't I have been raw for three years now and uh, and but also on top of that I haven't eaten any meat products in like 10 years uh, and I've been pretty healthy my 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 whole life because I've always been really health interested so I thought that you know the reason why people feel really bad is because of the food that they're eating and um, yeah, that wasn't the case for me though. And also, I only I've met, I've heard about a few raw vegan pregnancy stories, and they sound it sounded like they had no problems, no no morning sickness, no anything. So I was just imagining and ready to like just live an amazing life, and pregnancy was easy, and I was not gonna feel any different. That was not the case, and uh, now I'm gonna share with you what I went through, and it's been tough. It's been real hard, and um, so right up, pretty much right after I found out that I was pregnant, uh, that was also when I started feeling just some symptoms because um, I was four weeks in, and I started, you know, I could feel my body was craving different things, and it was interesting to me because. Um, I was craving oranges so badly and I was craving greens like I would go into a grocery store and I would see greens and I would salivate and I've never experienced that in my whole life so that was really interesting that was really fun and I was um, just drinking so much orange juice and so eating salads like and I wanted sushi that like I wanted to the nori sheets uh, <laughs> Raw, so I would make it raw. Wrap. Yeah, right. She I wanted the nori sheets, not once, the fish. I never wanted it again, but uh, I still had that idea of wanting it, and uh, it was. I felt like there was something different, and uh, and I felt like I was pregnant, and uh, so we took the test, and I was pregnant, and maybe two weeks later, I uh, I started feeling some symptoms like. Uh, well, in, in those two weeks, um, I was um, my cravings were getting more and more strange. It was very weird for me. Uh, I would be like, one day I would only want watermelon, the next day I would only want kiwi, the next day I would only want grapes. I would never want the same food two, t two days in a row. So it was very really hard because I was eating one food and I, I took it out of my diet, couldn't eat it again. So I had to eat a lot. I've, I've never eaten that much variety in my whole life. I ate so, like the hugest variety of food. I'd eat so many different foods and fruits that I usually, I'm not really interested in pears, but there was one day that I really wanted pears. And then one day that I really wanted uh, red kiwis and golden kiwis and all these, I, it was so funny.
pregnancy is not supposed to be this difficult, mysterious thing in nature. It's a normal human biological and physiological process. If someone thinks any aspect of pregnancy is supposed to be difficult, whether it's cravings or giving birth or nauseous, whatever it is, morning sickness, these things are not supposed to exist if the person is following a nutritionally adequate diet. Would we have evolved? You know, do we see these problems in other animals in nature? No, we don't. The reason we see it in humans is because we have deviated so far from our natural diets, unlike all of the other animals on this planet. Uh, she said she was craving oranges and greens. Uh, my only speculation on that is uh, a lack of iron. She could be anemic. So oranges being a source of vitamin C in her diet to increase the absorption of iron, uh, which there might be some non-heme iron in the greens. But the degree of absorption there is going to be insignificant. Uh, she literally said she was craving sushi and then justified it because she was craving the nori sheets, the actual seaweed. But I'm inclined to believe that she actually cheated on the diet and ate fish. Uh, it's something we've seen in vegans over and over again. Uh, there actually hasn't been an ex-vegan that didn't cheat on the vegan diet. So every single ex-vegan story we see, they were all cheating on the diet. They just weren't telling people. And then she said she never wanted the same food two days in a row. Uh, this could mean her body is slowly denying one food at a time. You know, she eats some watermelon. She's not getting the nutrients her body needs. Her body tells her, stop eating the watermelon. It seems like her body is eliminating everything one by one. I just went with the flow, you know. I was just, you know, eating whatever I wanted to eat. And I still was, I could still eat and it was good. And then I started feeling nauseous, uh, and it was weird. I did not understand why. At first, I thought it was because I wasn't eating enough because I did under eat a little bit because it was hard for me to eat that much of kiwis, you know. And so I was got starting to get some nausea, and it was not very nice. I remember being like, "Wow, this is horrible," and and I was like, "What is what? What am I doing wrong?" Because I thought this was not going to happen to me, but it never went away. And I was, every day, it would just stay. I would just keep, I would be nauseous all day. Like, I would wake up extremely nauseous and just go by the whole day, just nauseous the whole day. And it was intense. I've never experienced, you know, if I would ever get sick in my life, it would be like maximum two, three days, and, and that would be it. And then I would be, over that you know sickness but here i had to be sick for weeks and i kept just having nausea every day and it was i tried everything i tried to eat more i tried to eat frequently and it did help a little bit like then uh, try everything if she's still vegan recommend you to eat more frequently so that was what i was doing and that definitely helped. animal foods aren't but in their I vocabulary though nauseous all the time pretty much well, when I just after I've eaten, I would f like be feel good, and then maybe a, an hour later I would feel nauseous again. Uh, so that was really difficult. It was like hard time. So, but um, uh, yeah, so it was probably in around week six that I was experiencing nausea. Week seven was seven, eight, and nine were, were the hardest ones of my whole first trimester. It was so hard because at this time I have been under eating for a long time and I was so weak I had no energy I was so so low on you know fuel I couldn't do anything I could just lay down all day and I was nauseous like more than I've ever been and I started what eat, eating sugar time. all day doesn't give you enough started, energy from fruit um, throwing up so I would throw up just in the beginning I started throwing up just once a day and it became twice a day and then it became whenever I ate something that my body just didn't want to eat so in the beginning I before I would be able to eat a little bit of some things that at the end I couldn't eat pretty much anything else than pineapple and coconut water but sometimes I would still throw up coconut water coconut water I was so surprised how I, my body just couldn't do that and then I would be doing juices. I could only do 
uh, in the beginning I could do apple juice and orange juice but then after a while I just could not do that I would throw up if I even just smelled it and so I only did watermelon juice the last um, pretty much until I came to Denmark uh, for like a month maybe like a lived off of watermelon juice as a pregnant woman for a month 12, I was doing pineapple and uh, watermelon juice and about 600 calories a day or maximum 900 and it was um, it did not feel good it was a very tough situation it's what was the toughest situation it was the toughest time in my life because I was because you won't eat a steak and I because you think animals are cute food. it was every just the thought of fruit made me want to throw up like the the Eat, like juice was the, really the only thing and then I could eat some pineapple once in a while also I could do sugar cane juice but um, yeah that was how like how I felt with like my, my nausea and stuff and that was really difficult sugar cane um, juice sounds other nutritious changes that I felt in my body was I my I would get sore boobs so they and they would grow it's just not really a problem that was not really a big problem hi <laughs> uh, yeah they mean what all right that was um, someone from this neighborhood so um where did, what did I so that was one thing I experienced something else I experienced was um, what did I experience it's very sensitive uh, to smells uh, I could not stand the smell of fruit i couldn't stand the smell of fermented fruit like um we would sometimes have like a bowl of something that was um just you know fruit scraps or something and i could not stand that that was really hard for me um so i was experiencing um um really that was really difficult for me because we were living we were fruity vegetarian so we would have tons of fruit in the van and it made me just so sick. I sometimes I would just smell the papayas. Papaya was one of the things I really not could could not eat. Uh, I would throw up when I smelled it, and I would throw up if I smelled fruit. And um, and yeah, it was just difficult because you know I've always loved fruit, and suddenly in my life I experienced just could not eat any, and I I just really didn't. I was also eating crackers actually because I was that was something I could eat and it didn't make me want to throw up. I did throw it up sometimes, but I really it wasn't so it was not something that was bad. Uh, but I did not feel good <laughs> eating that. I would get so much gas and it, my fudge would stink really bad. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's not optimal. Um, but um, okay, so she knows yeah, what optimal is. Smells. I would also be um, very sensitive to like in just emotionally I would cry a lot easy more easy and I would um, I'm still like that <laughs> there's it's not much else that I experienced besides really really sensitive to smells really sensitive uh, in general just out cry very easily and and I, I, could, I felt that I really needed love at this time. Like, I, it, that was something that I was craving a lot. And uh, one thing is consistent for sure: these vegans have absolutely no understanding of the vitamin, the mineral, the element, the fatty acid content of these foods. You know, they think they're following the healthiest diet. There's some element of purity that they've established in their minds about veganism, about the vegan diet that they think is so good for them yet they're not giving their body any of the nutrients they need. And not just nutrients, you know, they're not giving their body fats and proteins, you know, essential energy sources. She was throwing up every single time she was eating, incapable of actually consuming, you know, a non-starvation amount of food. And her body, all the signals her body was giving her are indicators that she's not following the natural diet that her body wants. You know, she can't eat the fruit. She can't smell the fruit. She's vomiting up every single thing she's eating. Uh, you know, I looked at a recent video of hers and she stopped the raw vegan diet. It seems like she's eating cooked foods now. And 
in that video, she seemed really excited about her pregnancy and, you know, what she's going to do for her channel. But uh, I hate to burst her bubble, you know, with the amount of nutrition she's gotten during her pregnancy on a vegan diet, it's very unlikely that the child is going to be healthy. Uh, but we'll see how things turn out. I also experienced, um, uh, you know, coldness for some reason. But I think the reason why I felt so cold was because my body didn't have enough energy to heat itself up. So I would just shiver all the time and I needed to wear blank, like have blankets around me all the time. And yeah, so blankets in the middle now. of the I jungle, I, even being in Denmark where it's colder. I can sit here with the t-shirt and I'm fine because I've been eating more here and um, yeah, I don't feel so nauseous, but I'm gonna make a video about my second trimester once it's finished and um, I think that's it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. It's been really hard, but also, you know, teaching me a lot of things like, you know, how much the body goes through, even if you are a clean eater. Uh, go through in this time how many hormones that are changing how just everything is changing and I felt so many changes and um, it's been really amazing to feel all these things and keep feeling them um, but also really hard because I wasn't expecting this at all um, yeah so I'm excited to start getting back into exercising and moving and I want to do some yoga and I'm ready to do that now and yeah. What's crazy about this is we see this over and over and over again. The positive response and glamorization of all of these negative things that's happening to her. You know, she says how much the body can go through, how much she has suffered, yet it's an amazing experience. Oh yeah, I got mugged three months ago and I was stuck in the hospital with every bone in my legs broken, yet it was something I am grateful to have experienced. Put what a vegan is saying in the context of anything else negative and you'll realize how much of a cult it is. The amount of support these vegans get is unbelievable. Look at the comment section on any of their videos. They are all a bunch of brainwashed sheep. This portrayal of the vegan diet that is created is only something that could be achieved in a cult-like or religious mindset. And something I'm sure you all have noticed is the childish behavior as well. All of these vegans articulate themselves and act like children. This is just a glimpse of what is going on in every single vegan's head. They will try to justify their diet regardless of the result. It's just there's different levels of intelligence in these vegans. Unnatural Vegan, for instance, uh, another vegan YouTuber, appeals to the general population. She sounds pretty reasonable compared to this girl who is living in the woods wearing a dirty t-shirt. But the end result is very apparent. There is not one vegan who has an understanding of nutrition as they are simply cute, cuddly animal lovers with no regard for the human race. Thank you guys for joining me today. If you could please like the video, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. Uh, if you would like to support me further, guys, just check out some of the other videos on my channel. Uh, we have recently launched Frankie's Free Range Meat, providing you guys with high-quality, nutrient-dense animal foods. So if you are a lovely young pregnant woman and want to give your child the highest quality nutrition possible, we do have foods that our hunter-gatherer ancestors used to feed to pregnant women, uh, such as fish roe, raw cheeses, organ meats very high quality stuff. And if you want to look like a statue on the outside as well, go to frankiesnaturals.com, check out our minimal ingredient and minimally processed hygiene and cosmetic products, such as Frankie's hair cement. Uh, we got the moisturizing cream with vitamin D3, aka the ball grease, fluoride free tooth powder, aluminum free deodorant, bunch of stuff to check out guys, both on frankiesfreerangemeat.com and frankiesnaturals.com. Thanks again for joining me today, guys, and enjoy the rest of your day.